there's absolutely all kinds of areas to negotiate, um, including cash and call, by the way. But when hospital people, if we're using a hospital example, say to, uh, say to me or say to a, a young doc, uh, well, you know, we try to treat everybody the same. My immediate answer is, well, does that mean the custodial staff's getting paid the same and has the same benefits as the CEO? The reality is nobody is exactly the same as anybody else. Um, a management uh, phrase I like to invoke is the only thing that's more unfair than treating everybody the same is treating, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, the only thing worse than treating people differently is treating them all the same. <laughs> uh, because people have unique needs. You may have a young mom who's got schedule needs that don't match what the typical young male physician may, may you know, want to do or feel is a good schedule for him. Um, if the contract doesn't reflect that, it's not done a good job of really identifying and addressing the priorities of the individual physician. And just as you said earlier, uh, it's in the organization's best interest to try to make you happy. Yeah, you do take up more of their time. Yeah, you do generate more legal fees for them as these things have to be reviewed by their lawyers. But hey, it's your life. Um, and in, in an ideal world, at the end of the day, when both you and the organization are prepared to sign, you can both look at that set of papers, and it's usually never a single piece of paper. It's usually a 20 to 50 page, single space, small font, uh, written by their lawyer, uh, piece of paper that, but the, that you can both look at it and say, this is pretty good. This meets our needs. It isn't perfect. I don't think anybody's ever written a perfect contract, but it meets our needs. Then you've got a good contract, and hopefully you've made the right decision about the right place to be, and it'll never be looked at again.